Hey guys, I am here with a haircut. If you guys have not noticed on my social media outlets, I did get a haircut. I got it layered. Um, this is something new that I'm just trying out. I don't know if I'll be keeping it, but it's just something new. I also, in case you have not noticed, can't I can't really got a tattoo. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But I got a tattoo. I don't know. Can you see it? I think you guys can see it. So I actually, I even like kind of like jotted down some notes because I did want to remember everything that I wanted to say for this video. Um, we are done with week zero and done with week one. So this is going to be a recap for week one. Most of you guys already know, my husband left to Air Force BMT. And I, I don't think I, like, I think because all of our friends and, like, most of my family know that he's out there. Like, I didn't think to kind of, like, say what Air Force BMT is, but I'm going to tell you guys today. <laughs> he joined the U.S. Air Force, and he has to go to BMT. Uh, that's why we're apart right now. And BMT is basic military training. Uh, training? <laughs> what is it? Training? Um, and it's eight and a half weeks. And so the eight and a half weeks are in Texas. And it's without his cell phone. I have no communication with him besides letters. Uh, they say though to expect like your first letter like the second to third week. So I have not received a letter yet. That's a lie. I did receive a letter. It was just his, um, it was just his graduation date. Like, his graduation date, uh, like, the date, like, the specific days. The graduations always start on Thursday. So, it was showing me, like, the different activities that were going to be there. So, I do have a list of that, and I'm keeping an eye on that. And, uh, kind of just researching so I know what time to get there because they say that the gates to let you on to base get really packed. So, I'm just preparing for that. Um, so it's eight and a half weeks. We have no communication besides letters that we write to each other. I've probably written him, I don't know how many, but a lot. <laughs> and his sisters have written him, and his dad has written him, and his best friend has written him. So, um, yeah. So that's that. I remember to show you guys this mailing. I redid it. So it's the mailing info. And then this is how you would write him a letter. You would write A, B, his last name, his first name. And then um, I even wrote, like, you would do three three numbers, the TRS, which is your training room squadron. And then you have your flight, which is your flight, your training group that you're going to be with for the eight and a half weeks. And then your dorm. Um, it has, like, the template online, it has uh, three boxes. But, I mean, for us, it was just a letter and a number. So, I mean, I think it's different for everyone. And then the address, you know, obviously the base, Texas, and then the zip code, and then the four digits for the last of the zip code. So you have that. And then I just kind of wrote on the bottom. I'm going to take a picture of it so you guys can see, but yeah, you can see that training room squadron, and then the flight, which is your training group that you're going to be with for the whole time. Um, I've heard that, you know me. <laughs> watching a ton of videos but like I heard that some of the flights don't even see each other that often because they're like in different mm, let's say dorms I'm gonna say dorms or training room squadrons I mean I don't really know because I'm not over there but basically like there's gators knights like a bunch of different groups they're mascots and someone was telling me that like they don't really see each other because there's like the newer dorms and then there's the older dorms. Ricardo did get an older dorm, but the other one is called Disneyland, I guess because it's updated and newer. But yeah, that's it. So that's that was the mailing info again. Mailing info and then the little breakdown so you guys can see it. Um, <clears throat> week, I don't know if it's week zero or week one, and I'll double check with Ricardo, but he had his first physical assessment, so he has to, you know, run his mile, do push-ups, do sit-ups to kind of see where he's at, and then they'll test him again, like, midway through, and then he'll, has, he'll have his final assessment towards the end, 
that'll just like basically he'll pass obviously because he's fit and then not only that but it's more like seeing if he'll get honors or um and sometimes with honors you get like extra privileges depending sometimes with your mti it just depends on like your mti your group mti or like the people that are training them out there um wow i'm sorry guys but like it's so hard to talk with bangs i feel like i'm like hey <laughs> but um yeah so he ricardo received his gun well i'm like really struggling out here okay ricardo received his gun um he has to learn ricardo received his gun he has to learn how to take it apart uh put it back together he has to make sure if there's like a jam or anything wrong with it he can easily disassemble it and assemble it and be prepared to continue to fight or whatever he is um, doing he learned his basic drills so like over there they have to march march everywhere so he's marching his way over there so he learned how to do that um they got shots they had four shots it, i watched a video and it was so funny not funny but it was just like they legit just like roll up their sleeves they alcohol their salt their eh, they alcohol themselves and then the the like people just like boop, boop. if you know me you know i am terrified of needles like ricardo literally holds my hand when i get a shot or when anything or even when I get an IV, like if I'm going to the ER or something, like I am terrified of needles, which I don't know how I got my tattoo, guys. People were like, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And I went and I was like, this doesn't even hurt. Like, it like, it felt uncomfortable when he went on like my inner arm. But like, I was like, this does not hurt at all. Like before I left, I was like, hey, you want to do one more tattoo? Because I have another tattoo idea. But I decided not to because. I didn't want to do it impulsively. I wanted to think about what I wanted. And I didn't really even know what I wanted at the time. So yeah. So then Ricardo got his hair cut. He got his shots. I'm like looking down because I'm trying to remember everything. Um, and then week one, he also does like a cultural sensi training. Cultural sensitivity training. And then, oh my gosh, did you guys hear that? And then he needs about career options. And... Um, I don't know if I told you guys in the last video, but I can't remember. I have to do a better job at remembering. But Ricardo did go in as general aptitude, so he doesn't know his job yet. So we don't know how long his technical school is. So first it's BMT, and then after BMT, he'll go to technical school. And so, like, Sunday is the end of the graduation. Well, the graduation is really Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday it's family time. And then Monday we will be flying back and um that week he'll go to his technical school so yeah so he'll go to his technical school there was a little hair that fell out of my head and was there um he'll go to his technical school we don't know how long it'll be we don't know where it'll be uh because he did he did go in his general aptitude so it's kind of like i said everything is up in the air we don't know um when we do find out, I think it'll be like probably like week six or seven. So when we do find out, I'll definitely share with you guys just kind of more or less like what, how long he'll be in technical school. If he's in technical school for over 100 days, uh, the military will pay for our family to move out there with him. If it's, I mean, if it's 90 days, like we'll just foot the bill. Yeah, so that's up in the air. Like I said, um now i'm just gonna be waiting to see if i can get another letter from ricardo like a real letter <laughs> because even the, even the printout wasn't even like it was a sticker from where he's at and then it just says a b comma and all he wrote was rodriguez ricardo and then um to me he actually wrote my address but that's it like nothing else is like his handwriting so it was so funny when I got the letter. I was so excited. I went to my father-in-law's and I was like, I got a letter. I was like, I'm so excited. I got this letter. And he's like, what did he say? And I was like, nothing. But I can see his handwriting and that's all that matters because I know he's okay because I see his handwriting. And he's like, he, his father-in-law, my father-in-law just laughed at me. He was like, you're goofy. And I'm just like, I'm just going to carry this letter everywhere I go. And I literally had it in my diaper bag and I was like, I, I Ricardo's going everywhere that I'm going because I have this letter with me. <laughs> um, 
I'm being a little bit dramatic, but I'm being dramatic because for those who don't know, Ricardo and I have been together since I was 14 years old. So like 14 and I'm 27 now. Wow, 27 guys. So from 14 to 27, however many years that may be, I'm not gonna do the math because I don't really, it doesn't really matter, but you guys get the point. I was 14 years old when I started dating Ricardo and since then, like, I think the most we've been together, I mean, the most we've been without each other is a week when he would go at his old job for a week training in Florida. So, like, this, and we would text, he would text me. And, like, even when he went, he went to Mexico to go and, um, he tried out for, like, a soccer team out there. And even then, we were communicating through face, through MySpace. So, like, we were always in communication. I've never not had any communication and, like, just not know how my husband's doing. So, or my boyfriend at the time. So, this was, like, this is, this is hard. I think, I honestly, like, I think, I think week one was the hardest for me. And I think that Monday and Tuesday, like, I really struggled. I really struggled and I was kind of just, like, I was really sad. I was in a funk. Um, I, my dad was like helping me out with the kids a lot that week. Um, Friday we did end up going to, um, my sister-in-law's and I, we went to uh, the Anuel concert, which I'll share a little bit. J Balvin who is like the love of my life I love him so much he's amazing he's such an amazing performer he has great songs he collaborates with like amazing people that you're just like what I went to go see Maluma he was good um I don't really like know what's in his songs but he was good he was good Osuna guys I like him but he sucks as a he, he sucks as a performer. I do not, I, I told my husband last time, I will not pay again to go see Osuna because it just wasn't worth it for me. And then this time I went to go see Anuel. It was my first time. It was amazing. He did such a good job. I was like, whoa, another level. I've been listening to him nonstop and Carol G because that's his girlfriend. <laughs> I love them. That's all for this week, folks. <laughs> um, I do want to tell you guys more about my tattoo. I wish I could, like, I wish I could. Let me see if I can. Kind of. Ooh. There you guys go. You see? There you go. You guys can see my tattoo. It symbolizes a lot for me. I actually took three different photos and I took pieces of each photo because like there were, I looked online for a lot of globes and some of them were really shaded and I was like, I don't want all that shading in my tattoo. Like, it's not what I'm looking for. And then I wanted it to be dainty, like kind of like feminine. And then I wanted to make sure I incorporated the sun, the moon, the airplane, um, the flowers like the weeds and stuff like that and I will tell you guys um for me like the earth it's gonna be so hard let me kind of like turn my body because it's gonna be hard I don't know I don't know I don't know if that's any better but uh let's bring this closer all right so like the earth symbolizes for me um life and just nature creativity and strength and also, it reminds me of my mom because uh, when I graduated, she gave me a book, uh, All the Places You'll Go. And I've always, like, I want to see the... Gosh, I'm, like, kind of talking sideways. <laughs> um, I want to see the world. And I just feel like when my mom gave me that, it's, like, kind of saying, like, there's nothing that can stop me. And just, like, you guys hear Benji? He's barking. Benji, it's okay, baby. 
so my mom gave me that book it kind of just means like all oh, the places you'll go i see it like where can i go i can go anywhere i want to go nothing can stop me because just nothing can stop me so that's why i have my earth um and what it you know life nature and all that jazz and the airplane also i'll tell you guys next the airplane symbolizes this is actually before ricardo joined the air force but um when we got married we promised each other that every year we would go somewhere that we have not been and uh we have in fact done that sun gosh this is gonna be so hard okay the sun for me is aiden it symbolizes life strength <clears throat> and a uh, fire which is funny because Aiden actually symbolizes this little ball of fire there's the sun right there so the life is actually I um, got pregnant after my grandfather passed away so I just feel like the life you know life after death and um, just strength I mean I feel like Aiden is such a strong um, he's just a, he's such a strong little boy like he reminds me so much of myself and it's funny because he's the one that looks more like me owen looks more like ricardo and aiden looks more like me he's my twin we have the same facial reactions all the time and then i'll show you guys again we're gonna be going back and forth <laughs> and then i'll show you guys right here is my moon and that to me represents growth memory of um a loved one which the loved one is actually the baby that i miscarried right before owen so the growth was growing, um, just growing after that. And then, of course, um, in Hindu, it means like newborn. And Owen was that newborn, like my rainbow baby after that. I didn't want to get a rainbow because I really wanted the sun and the moon to represent um, Owen, Aiden, and then the baby that I miscarried. Um, the three stars, which you'll see, they're right by the moon. I don't know if you guys can see them. But they're right there. One, two, three. These three stars are, for me, represent heavenly bodies. Um, this one is um, my grandpa, Ramon. And then this one is my grandma, Cielo. And then this one is my mama, Nika. Um, of course, my mama, Nika is still, she's still alive. Um, the three stars also represent, like, the change, uh, changes in my life. When my grandma and grandfather passed, it was like a big change for me. Um, and they also, these two stars represent sorrow because it was very, very, um, it was very sad when my grandma and grandpa passed. Uh, my brother and I were close to them and my brother more than I. Um, but like, it was just really unexpected. Like my grandmother passed due to cancer and then my grandfather passed like within months after like they were so close and just like they were just such an example for me of like love like they really my grandma would tell me all the time like you don't give up you keep fighting for your marriage like and i would just be like all right grandma <laughs> i got it and like she she was just she was such a great person and they were so loving and they loved with all they had oh I can't and then um wow I'm like getting actually like emotional um <clears throat> gotta pull myself together um my grandma my mama Nika if you guys know she it's she's she is a sweetheart she <laughs> and like it's funny because when I say she's a sweetheart like don't get me wrong like she can be a sassy queen sometimes but she legit like my mom would leave me over there um during summer vacations and stuff like that um summer break from school I would go hang out with my grandma and I'd be with her like every day and um I love my grandma so much <laughs> guys this is like I'm like choking back not choking back tears but like i really like these three stars symbolize so much for me and um yeah we'll, we'll skip we'll keep going guys uh, <clears throat> let me not cry um so then the rose right here it actually just symbolizes love um i think i try to live my life with a lot of love i love i love 
all my loved ones and I think they know that I love them because I try to show them as much as I can and then uh over here the gerber uh gerbera <laughs> I know it's such a weird flower it's so random but it's cheerfulness I try to um you know, I try to be cheerful. I think that flower symbolizes a lot for me. And then this last one is a dogwood flower. And that is just rebirth and resurrection. So before I decided that I was for sure going to get another tattoo. Well, I guess when I decided to get this tattoo, I wanted to also have my faith included. So I decided to get that one. And then I'm actually going to get another tattoo. <laughs> Everyone says they're addicting and now I understand why because they are addicting. I already have another plan for my next tattoo. It's going to be small. I Probably none of you guys will be able to see it anyway. Um, that one will be for my faith more. But I'm glad I got this one because then I'll have like two tattoos for my faith. Um, and then like these little weeds. <laughs> these little weeds are also for my mama Nika. I'm like showing you guys like you guys can see. You'll see a couple weeds in my tattoo. And the reason I have those weeds is because when I used to go um, with my grandmother, and I would, I actually took care of her for about a year and a half um, before we put her in the nursing home. Before my family put her in the nursing home. Um, and it just reminds me because, like, we would go in the backyard and she'd be like, We have to take out the weeds. The weeds cannot come. And, like, it, the way the backyard was set up, it was like, um, not bricks but like I don't know how to describe it but like some of it was concrete like cement and then this side right here by her flowers was like brick not bricks gosh I'm gonna have to like look at what it was but it was basically something similar to bricks and in between little cracks there would be like little weeds coming out she hated those weeds <laughs> and we would be out there pulling them and pulling them and pulling them until there was no more pull it was funny. Even Owen. Owen was a baby. He must have been like one or two. And he was out there pulling them and pulling them and pulling them. Right, Owen? Yeah. Here comes Owen. You were pulling them? Yeah. You were helping Mama Nika? What did Mama Nika say? Uh. What did Mama Nika say? Oh, we have another visitor. Hi, Benji. <laughs> Look at the camera. Benji, stop. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he wants to give me kisses, guys. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can tell you guys. I mean, I told you guys about my tattoo. told you guys about my haircut. And I told you guys an update on Ricardo. I'm hoping that next week we get a better update. Maybe he'll tell us something funny or exciting. Um, if you have not yet subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing some more stuff coming up. And subscribe to the channel? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is so silly. You guys have no clue. Um, and then uh, like this video, thumbs up, and comment if you have a question or you want to know something. I am pretty much an open book and I'll share. Say bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>